Hello everyone and welcome to my channel MI Tutorials. This is a very exciting tutorial. I will be teaching you how to integrate Power Apps within Power BI to update records back into your SQL Server or any other database that you are using. Let me give you a quick demo of what I'm talking about. Let's say I have a table over here. I have the support tickets wherein the end users are working on those support tickets and Let's say I have a high priority ticket over here. I can simply click on this particular ticket number, which is 220. The form that I have over here gets filtered to that particular ticket, which is 220. And then I can type in action that I have taken for that particular ticket. For example, I sent an email to the vendor and then I can choose the action status over here. Let's say this is work in progress. And then I can add in any comment if I want, I'll just say test comment for now and then I can click on submit. So the moment I click on submit, this particular data gets updated back into our SQL server and then the same columns over here are pulled in into this particular table which gives you a live view of what you have updated in your database. And I also have the username who updated this particular record. Now since this is a live connection and any other users or your manager using this particular dashboard, he will be able to see this live and track what is happening on this particular ticket. So this is what I will be teaching you today. Please note that this is going to be a very extensive tutorial. You will have to follow each and every step that I show you in this particular tutorial. If you do not follow, then you might miss out on certain things and you might not be able to create this app. So let's get started with this tutorial. So the first thing that we will do here is take a look at the data set that I have over here. I have a tickets fact table wherein I have ticket ID. This is the primary key that I have in this particular table. And I have some requester information, the ticket type, etc. And if you would want to plug in the action status, and uh, comments and last updated by you can do that in this particular table as well however i have created a new table with only that particular information over here so i have the ticket id column followed by action status action comments etc right now we will import this into sql server so let's start by importing the tables into our SQL Server. So one thing that you need to note here is that the ticket status table that I have over here, you need to have the primary key defined explicitly. So ticket ID in this case is going to be my primary key. So I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to say, I'm going to remove the not null because primary key does not contain null values. So, and then I'm going to say primary key click on OK and then I'm going to click on OK and then import these tables into my database. Mm -hmm. Let's jump back into Power BI and I'm going to import the data from the SQL Server. So I have my server name. In this case, uh, my first import here is going to be of the fact table. So I'm going to use an import method over here. And for the uh, tickets status table, I'm going to use the direct query because the moment I click on that submit button, I want the data to appear on my table. So only direct query can do that. You will not be able to do that if you are using the import method. So I'm going to use the uh, ticket fact table over here and click on load. So I have my uh, tickets fact table uh, loaded now. And then I'm going to go back into my SQL server. And this time I'm going to use direct query. Then I'm going to click on OK. And I'm going to choose the ticket status table over here and click on load. Now I have the ticket status table loaded as direct query table. And now I'm going to come over here and create a relationship between this ticket ID and this particular ticket ID column over here. And I'm going to click on OK. So this is one to one relationship. I'm going to click on OK. We've created a relationship now. Let's create a table first over here. I'm going to add ticket ID, ticket type and uh, priority. Uh, I think these rows for now look OK. And then I'm going to bring in the values from my action status ticket actions table which is action, action status, comments, last updated by, last updated date. So I'm going to go over here to the drop down and choose Power Apps for Power BI as the visual. And I'm going to add the ticket ID from the ticket status table here and just wait for a second and then it'll ask you whether you want to choose an app or create new. In this case, we have not created an app. So we're going to click on create new. A huge link will be created for you to navigate to and you can simply just click on OK 
Now what this is doing is Power BI is creating a connection between the Power BI data set and the Power Apps itself. So this is now natively getting integrated into each other and just give it a moment while things are getting ready here. You will get a pop-up like this. I'm going to just click on skip over here and now you will start seeing all of the IDs that we have present in our data set. So what we will now do is I'm going to come back to my new screen over here, head over to templates and click on form. So what this will do is it will add a new screen to the form and then I'm going to come back to my old screen and I'm going to delete this particular screen over here. And then you will see little icons over here. We don't really need them. So I'm going to come over here and click on delete. I'm going to delete the second icon as well. And also the app name that we have over here. So now we have a clean form which is created for us. And what we will now do is we will need to connect to data. In this case, I'm going to click on connect data and then click on add data over here. I'm going to type in SQL and create a connection with the SQL server. I already have a connection created over here. So I'm going to just come. Otherwise, it will ask you to enter the details of the server, password, how do you want to log in, etc. Also, please note that you will need to have an on-prem data gateway to be able to use this. So if you don't have one, you can install uh, the uh, on-prem data gateway onto your machine. And if you're not able to do that, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to make another tutorial on that. And in this case, I'm going to choose the ticket status table that we want to connect with. And then I'm going to click on connect. So once the connection has been created, you will see the data source being listed over here under the data source. You can go to this particular drop down and choose the ticket status option that we just created and then click on edit field. And when you click on add field, you will see all the fields that we have over here. I'm going to choose all of them and then click on add. So once you click on add, you will see all of the fields being added over here. Let's reorder them. I'm going to push the last updated date below, last updated by below. And then I need to have my action on top, action status on top, and then comment section below. Now that we have reordered these fields, now we need to bring in the values from the Power BI into this particular ticket ID field. If you notice, we already have the Power BI integration um, connector, which is between the Power BI and Power Apps already created for us. What we will have to do is make use of this Power BI integration connector to bring in the values from Power BI into Power Apps. Let's rename the form that we've created over here. I'm gonna call this as tickets underscore form. And once we've renamed this, Let's go back to this particular drop down that we have over here and head over to item and over here you will see blank value because we don't have any values over here. I'm going to use the lookup function to bring in the values into the ticket ID field. So I'm going to use the lookup function. The source here is going to be my ticket status table comma and I need to look up the ticket ID. I'm going to choose the ticket ID column over here is equals to and then I'm going to say first of Power BI integration dot data. I'm going to close the bracket here and then say dot ticket ID. You need to make sure that you're exactly entering these values over here. Otherwise, this is not going to work. And then the end, I'm going to close the bracket here to close the lookup parenthesis. And then I'm going to click on OK. So once this is confirmed, it will take a moment. And then you will see that the ticket ID has started to appear in our form. So what we can now do is let us save this app and publish this. Let's call this as tickets app and click on save. You need to save the app and you also need to publish the app. If you do not publish the app by clicking on this particular icon over here, the changes will not appear for the rest of the users. Now that the app has been published, let's head back to Power BI. Now I'm here in Power BI and it is just the app is getting refreshed and you will see that once this is done or if you're if this app is not getting refreshed, what you need to do is just add a new page or if you already have a new page, you can just navigate to a different page and come back to this particular page and the app will get loaded over here and you will see that it is getting the data and now if I click on any of my ticket ID example if I click on 11 ticket ID 
you will see that the ticket ID is getting filtered and displaying ticket ID as 11 in this case. And then I can update the status or action comments, etc. over here. So some more stuff to do. So let's head back to Power Apps. Now that we have the ticket ID appearing over here, we need to add a submit button so that the data gets submitted. So let's go back to our insert tab and click on button over here. A new button gets added. I'm going to place this over here and then let's rename this to submit and then I'm also going to the insert tab I'm going to add a text label over here I'm going to call this as tickets ticket status update you can name this whatever you want to and just reformat this make this white so that it is clearly visible and then you can make this bold Increase the font size if you would like to. I'm going to make this as 25 for now. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now that we've created, so I need to tell Power Apps what needs to happen when I click on Submit button. Now let's click on this button over here and let's head over to the drop down and you will see that On Select is already selected. This is where we need to go. We need to select On Select. And right now it's false. I'm going to remove that and say Submit Form. And Tickets form is what I need to submit. I'm going to close the bracket here and press enter. And now you will see that we've already assigned a task to this particular button. Now that we have assigned an action to this particular submit button, it also needs to let us know that the submission has happened. So to do that, I'm going to click on the tickets form over here. And then I'm going to, from this drop down, I'm going to choose on success. And right now it's set at false. Here I'm going to get rid of the false. Instead, I'm going to type in Power BI integration dot refresh, and it needs to refresh the visuals. And then I'm going to enter a colon over here. When you enter colon over here, it means that on success there are multiple things that need to happen. One is it needs to refresh the Power BI integration visuals, and the second thing is it needs to notify the users that the submission has happened. In this case, we're going to use the notify function and it's asking us to enter the text. So I'm going to say successfully submitted, close the quotes over here and then followed by a comma. And then it's asking us what is the notification type that you want, whether you want an error notification or information or success. So in this case, we will choose success over here, followed by a comma. And then there's a timeout. How many milliseconds do you want that particular display notification to appear? So let's choose 3000 in this case 3000 milliseconds is what we want the success message to appear and then get disappeared let's save this app and also publish this and let's test this back in our Power bi report so let me publish this as well i'm going to publish this now that it is published let's head back to power bi and now we need to refresh the page over here or just navigate to a different page and come back to this page and you will see that this app is now getting refreshed and you will already notice that the submit button, this ticket status update label that we added. And let me click on 25th ticket ID over here. You will see that it's getting selected as 25th action. Let me just type in test action, action status. I'm gonna say open comments, test comment, right? Last updated by and last updated date is something that I want Power Apps to pick up automatically. So I'm gonna leave that blank and I'll head back to Power Apps again to show you how to do that. And now I'm gonna click on Submit. You will see that it is now getting submitted. It says successfully submitted. It appears for 3000 milliseconds and then the success message gets disappeared. Now, the reason why you're not seeing the value over here is because uh, you will have to publish the report to Power BI service to be able to see that data live. So to do that, let's quickly publish this particular report. And now we are here in Power BI service and you will see that the record that we updated 25th is already appearing over here. Let's choose another value, let's say 55 in this case. And let's type in action over here. I'm gonna just type in 55th ID, action status. Let me make this as work in progress. I'm gonna say test comment and then click on submit so the moment you hit submit it it is only going to take a couple of seconds to submit the record and also bring back the values over here so as you can see here 
you we have the live connection with the database and it has already pulled in the values from the sql server so now it's time for us to add the last updated by and last updated date automatically to this particular power app so let's go back to power apps and what we now need to do is select this particular section over here or uh, there are two things one is the entire section and the other thing is just this particular section over here we're going to choose the just the rectangle that we have over here where the data gets entered and then I'm going to go to the advanced tab I'm going to unlock the properties over here and then I'm going to say parent dot default instead of parent dot default this is going to be user I'm going to close the parenthesis over here then I'm going to type in dot over here and then there are three options that are available there's email there's full name there's image in this case I'm going to choose full name and power, power app will now automatically bring in the full name from my active directory so that i have the name populated automatically in this particular form i don't really need to show this particular field in the form so to hide this or to make this invisible what i need to do is i'm going to select the entire field over here and just scroll down and then you have an option whether it is visible true or not and then now here i'm going to choose false and this particular field will get disappeared likewise i'm going to come here to last updated date i'm going to select the rectangle within the last updated date and come here to the advanced properties i'm going to unlock the properties over here come back to default under data tab i'm going to get rid of this and just say now open and close parenthesis and you will have the date and time populated automatically now i'm going to select the entire field over here scroll down and under the advanced tab I'm going to change the visible property here to false. Now both of those fields are now hidden. You can just move the submit button a little above over here. And let's also add in a drop down to the action status over here. Now let's add a drop down to our action status field over here. Let's choose the entire field over here, action status, and then click on edit. And under action status over here, from this particular drop down, I'm going to choose allowed values, which will convert that particular field into a drop down and now we will have to define values that are allowed in that particular drop down so i'm going to go to the advanced tab over here and i'm going to choose the rectangle that we have over here and then unlock the properties and under data items parent dot allowed values i'm going to remove this i'm going to add a square bracket over here and within quotes i'm going to enter the values that i want so in the first case, I want a blank value to appear and on the second, I want an open status and then I need closed and then I need work in progress. So I'm going to close the square bracket that I have over here and then I'm going to click on OK. So once this is done, if I press Alt and click on this particular drop down while you are on Power Apps, you'll be able to see the drop down options that are available for you. And now it's time for us to save and publish this particular app now that we have done all the changes that we want I can simply click on publish app and once this is published I'm going to say publish this particular version and now let's head back to power bi I'm going to refresh this particular page over here and you will see that we now have an updated app being displayed for us let's type in an action over here let's say I sent an email to the vendor and action status I'm gonna say work in progress I'm gonna say comment awaiting confirmation and now I'm gonna click on submit so the moment you hit submit it's going to submit the data back into my SQL server and then also bring in the values into my particular table that I have over here also notice that this time we have the last update by column as well as the date and time when that particular user submitted these values into the database so isn't this really cool feature to have in your Power BI reports, especially you if you are someone who are dealing with support tickets or with contracts that you are dealing with and you want to uh, update the team of what is happening. And if you want to update the team about what is happening on the progress of those tickets, etc., you can definitely use Power Apps and natively integrate within Power BI to be able to use this seamlessly. You don't have to leave power bi at all to update information back into your sql server i know that this was a very extensive tutorial i had to do this because if you guys miss any of the steps you will not be able to achieve this so 
I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Also, let me know in the comment section if you are going to build this app in at your workspace and make use of these features. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching.